Hey everybody, this is Praxis. The world is falling apart at the seams right now, and in this video I'm going to 100% guaranteed convince you that it is a terrible idea to bet your and your family's survival on the idea that this mess is being controlled by a global elite. Don't believe me? Stick around, listen to what I have to say, and you tell me why I'm wrong. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need a bank, no, I'm funded. Play the game like it's nothing. I'm always thankful for something. Don't take for granted, stay humble. Now, waiting, better believe in your mind, cause it's everything. You can mold, shape, find almost anything. This is another one of those videos that I do where I feel like what I'm talking about is really important, but who wants to sit and stare at me during the entire time? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you on a visual tour of the homestead here. We're going to go out into the woods and we're going to search down something that I haven't shown any of you guys before. There's a really, really old gravestone out in the woods here. It's just out in the middle of the woods. It's got a story behind it. We're going to hunt down that gravestone. You're going to get to see it. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you what I know about what caused that headstone to be there. So the topic of this video is that there's this idea out there that there is a global elite, a bunch of rich, powerful people, and they have this plot to destroy the world, and that explains what we're seeing in the world around us right now. And specifically what I want to talk about is why you need to stop expending energy thinking and especially talking about it. That sounds a little counterintuitive. It sounds probably pretty important if there was a group of global elites trying to destroy the world. Sounds like the plot of a James Bond film. So why wouldn't we want to talk about that? Why wouldn't we want to think about that? Well, the reason for that gets into the idea of what this theory actually talks about. And what this talks about is that there are these rich, powerful, elite people who control everything. And they're behind all the trouble that's in the world. And not only are they incredibly rich and incredibly powerful, and do they have this uh, hell-bent urge to try to you know, destroy and enslave all of us? On top of that, they are incredibly, incredibly smart. Almost to the point where, and I would suggest they are literally to the point, where they are omniscient. They're essentially gods. And uh, you know, why, do I, why do I say that? Well, when people talk uh, about these global elitist plots, uh, they're usually talking about how uh, they're doing all these things, they're pulling strings in the background, uh, their, uh, their plans, they always kind of keep secret, but they also put the plans in the open. This is one thing, uh, hiding things in plain sight is something you hear an awful lot. And um, one, of the, one of the key features of these uh, plans is that whenever people openly state that they know what their plan is, and people are doing that all the time, and that's why I'm making this video, is people are constantly saying, the global elite have a plan to do X, Y, and Z. Whenever X, Y, and Z don't happen, the story changes, and it changes to the idea that, well, X, Y, and Z, they wanted us to think that that was their plot. They wanted us to think that that was their intention, but really, their intention is something different, and that was just kind of a cover for something else. No matter what happens, no matter what people say the plot of these elite people is, when those things don't end up happening, uh, it's not because the elites failed. That's not usually the storyline that I hear anyway. The, the storyline is that it's all just part of their plan. They are omnipotent. They control everything. Nothing doesn't go to their plan. Okay? So that, that is the basic idea of what we're talking about it here is are there global elites who are like that? Obviously the world is full of rich people. It's full of powerful people. It'll, it is full of poor people. It is full of people who are not very powerful. It's a part of human nature. If you have strength, you oftentimes want to maximize that and continue getting more. For people who are rich, they usually are trying to get more money. For people who are powerful, they're usually trying to get more power powerful. But the, the key element here is that those people are absolutely infallibly omniscient, they have dark intentions, and they can't be stopped. I'm not uh, advocating against the idea that people think that uh, plots and conspiracies exist. I mean, a conspiracy is just a basic thing. It's when people come uh, to some kind of a silent agreement about something towards their own ends. I mean, that It's a normal part of life. Uh, every company has uh, company meetings, internal board meetings, where they talk about things privately. They don't want to share them with the public or with you know their competitors because they are conspiring to, you know, do better at business. Nothing wrong with that. That's just a part of life. You know, you, you keep some things playing close to the chest because, you know, oftentimes that works out better for you. So why should we ignore them? They sound incredibly dangerous. The idea that there are these global elites who are omniscient, ultra-powerful, can't be stopped. You know, why wouldn't we want to talk about that? It sounds like that's pretty important. We probably should be thinking about that and talking about that. Well, the reason is because of that 
omniscient infallibility, it makes them pretty much like a force of nature, uh, like the weather, like a hurricane. Uh, now, you can talk about a hurricane existing, and uh, you know you can talk about, uh, you know, oftentimes people will talk about the idea of you know, what generated this hurricane that, that's headed our way. Uh, you know, right now that's kind of a debate between a lot of people. You know, there are some people that say that uh, you know, all of Earth's weather is completely 100% driven by natural forces. Uh, there are other people that say that the weather patterns of the world, the climate, is being driven by natural forces. But then on top of that, you know, there are people that say, and there is an anthropogenic uh, element to it as well. You know, humans are, are playing with the mixture of gases in the atmosphere, and since the atmosphere plays a role in climate, uh, it would make sense that humans in that way are having some kind of an anthropogenic effect uh, on climate and therefore, you know, uh, indirectly uh, through to weather. And then there are people that I, I think are honestly kind of crazy to think that humans are the only drivers of, of everything. Uh, you know, there are people that uh, say that, uh, you know, these elite people have weather machines and they're causing all the hurricanes and, and everything like that. So there's a whole spectrum there from people that think that uh, a hurricane is created by forces that are uh, entirely natural, people that believe that it's kind of a mixture between natural uh, forces and things that humans have kind of messed with, and then you got people who are saying that the hurricane is completely created by humans with their weather machine or whatever. Well, at the end of the day, you got a hurricane coming at you, and if you can't stop the hurricane, and I know, I, I, I guess, if you're Donald Trump, maybe uh, Donald Trump had that idea that you could shoot a nuke into a hurricane and stop it, uh, you know, uh, spoiler alert, that wouldn't work, but for all the rest of us who aren't Donald Trump, uh, and we're aware that we can't stop a hurricane, does it really matter what is causing the hurricane when it's headed in your direction? Does it matter whether humans uh, played a role in creating that hurricane? Does it matter whether it was only humans, whether it was only nature? Or do you really just need to worry about battening down the hatches on your house, getting your lawn furniture uh, you know, in from inside, maybe boarding up your windows, considering uh, evacuating if you're in a low-lying area? Does it matter in terms of your response to this danger? Does it matter what created it? In the case of a hurricane, no, it really doesn't because you can't change it anyway. If a hurricane is heading in your direction, knowing exactly what caused that hurricane isn't going to allow you to stop it from hitting you. It's not going to allow you to stop you know, hurricanes coming next week or next year or a century from now. These things are a force of nature. They're something that we have to accept and understand, and we can react to them, but we can't change the fact itself. And that is the way I feel about these kind of global elitist omniscient force of nature kind of, uh, you know, plots that I hear about, if they are the way that people describe them, if these elites are as omniscient and as infallible and as smart and clever as these people themselves describe them as, it doesn't make any difference whether or not they're correct about that. Because if the elites are that smart, there's nothing we can do about it. All we can do is react to it. So if the global elites are creating a dangerous situation for us, and people who advocate for these theories believe that they are, we need to get ready for that danger. We don't need to be burning time talking about you know, whether or not this danger is caused by elites if the elites are so smart that there's nothing that we can do to stop them anyhow. All we need to do is use our time, our resources, our energy on getting ready for the, the threats that we are facing. So that is the reason why, even if you believe that these stories are true, and I personally do not, and I'll, tell, uh, I'll talk a little bit later in this video about what I do think is true, but even if you do think they're true, it is a waste of your time and the time of everyone else around you to be getting your panties all up in a bunch about something that you yourself are advocating cannot be changed. It's a fact that cannot be altered. So why would you bother to talk about it when there is really very important work to do? Because again, you yourself are saying that they're putting us in a very dangerous situation. So why not get ready for that? Okay, so let's go on to the next set of, uh, part of this video. I mentioned earlier in the video that I do believe that uh, people get together and they come up with conspiracies and they try to uh, uh, achieve things. They do these things in secret. People who are rich tend to want to be more rich. People who are powerful tend to want to be more powerful. So why don't I believe in this specific type of theory? Well, I believe if people were as powerful and omniscient and infallible as people describe these people uh, being, they could have executed their plans a long time ago. This stuff is not rocket science. There are things that you could do right now uh, here in the world to get the kind of control that people talk about uh, these elites wanting to get. Recently, we just went through this virus outbreak that I'm not really going to talk about in any detail because I don't want to get this... Uh, 
a video blacklisted. But, uh, you know, we went through this thing and there was a uh, lockdown and there were a lot of people that were talking about how this is the final, uh, you know, move of the elites. They're going to put us all in FEMA camps and I'm, I'm using all the kinds of buzzwords. This video is already going to get blacklisted. But, you know, that, that was one of the events where people were making all of these kinds of predictions, which, you know, as we all saw, did not come to pass uh, in any large way, except in China. China's not doing that great. But by and large, the predictions that people made did not come to pass. But it was a good example of a situation where you had a germ that was out in the world and it had impacts on the world. If there was a group of elites who wanted to take over the world and turn us all into their slaves or reduce the population or whatever they would like to do, they could just hire scientists who would be very, I'm sure you could find some people on this planet that would be very happy to do this, hire scientists to create a pathogen, create some kind of a virus that would, uh, you know, infect everyone in the world and do something along the lines of, uh, say, uh, destroy people's uh, ability to synthesize some type of protein or some, some type of a compound in the body that's necessary. Create some kind of a virus that would very, very easily spread throughout the world that would destroy people's ability to synthesize that protein and then you pr uh, produce this protein and you sell it to people and you only sell it to people that you want to live. You let the vast majority of the population die because you won't sell them this protein and they just kind of waste away and the people that you want to preserve to be your slaves you keep them hooked they're on the dole because only you can provide this uh, this protein and there you go that's just one example of the way that you know global elites if they wanted to reduce the population and turn us all into slaves it would be very easy to do so the fact that things like that haven't happened when they're so easy to do it suggests to me that's not the reality, that there are not global elites who want to destroy you know, everyone on the planet and turn us all into their slaves. I think human nature drives people to want to get the best for themselves, to get the best for their families, but there are very few human beings on this planet that uh, you know, have that kind of psychotic, sociopathic sort of tendency uh, that is paired with uh, you know, great means, uh, you know, the, the, the means to... Um, uh, enact those types of uh, ideas. So, you know, the fact that those things haven't happened is suggestion to me that, you know, I think that they're just not true. So I think that's the end of that story. So what do I think the world is like if I don't think that it's ruled by global elites or omniscient can do anything they want and they have all these dark intentions for us? What do I think that the world uh, really is like? Well, uh, I was talking to someone, it was one of these people uh, in comments the other day that is an advocate for the idea that there's a global elite and they, you know, want to do everything that I've been talking about in this video. Uh, and I use an uh, analogy to them that I, I see the world as almost being kind of like a bus. Uh, you have people who are passengers on the bus that don't have that much control over the bus itself. Uh, you know, they can advocate to the driver to do different things. Um, and then you have the driver who is in much more control of the bus. And then you have kind of like the busing company owners that own the bus and they have a lot of control over the bus. So you kind of have different people at different stages. You have a small number of people that have a great deal of control over this bus. You have a lot of, a lot of people who are in the bus that don't have uh, you know, a ton of control. They're just kind of along for the ride. And that's kind of the way that I see the world. Uh, and you, know, you could say, well, the, the global elite are the owners and they could do anything they, uh, they want with this bus. Uh, you know, they can turn it any direction they want. Well, the way I see the world right now is that there's a great deal of chaos. There, is a, there are a lot of problems in the world right now. And I see our world as being kind of like a bus where the brakes are worn down and practically not working. This bus is hurtling down the side of a mountain, you know, towards a curve ahead. Maybe part of the bus is on fire. Under those circumstances, how much control does that bus driver really have on the outcome? You know, they have more control than any of the passengers, but, you know, that bus driver is being one of these people that is kind of directing things in the world, one of these more powerful people. How much actual control do they have? Now, they can get on their intercom and say, you know, uh, don't panic, I've got it all under control, <laughs> and that's what governments do. Uh, they can try to uh, get control of this bus, and they can do their honest best because they're on that bus along with everybody else. Um, but ultimately, because people didn't, you know, th themselves included, because they didn't put in the proper attention to maintain the brakes, because they didn't make sure they had fire extinguishers and, wh and whatnot, you know, this thing is hurtling down the road, brakes aren't working, things on fire. There's only so much that they can really do. And I, I feel that that is the way that the world is right now, where you have global elites, people are powerful, you have people who are less powerful, but we're really all in it together. And I think that's a terrifying thought for people. So. As we head forward into things, just keep that idea in mind that I believe there's a really good, a really good chance that this is just all chaos. And you know what happens in the end isn't controlled by you, by me, 
by global elites or anyone, but everybody just collectively in this cacophony of noise trying to do the best they can with some sense of responsibility to the people around them, but mostly people acting through self-interest. I mean, uh, uh, being totally honest about it, I mean, that's what a lot of us do here on prepping channels. You know, we, we talk about helping others and we do really mean that, but ultimately the majority of the stuff that we do as preppers is to help ourselves and help our family. Uh, you know, it's self-interest, self-directed, and I think if enough people do that kind of thing, collectively it's good for the society, but uh, that's not always the case that small self-interest actions always work towards the, best, uh, the betterment of everyone. Uh, I know that, that, that kind of goes against capitalism to, to say that, but I, I think it's just a reality. That's kind of the downside of capitalism is that uh, working only through self-interest doesn't always lead to the best ends. It often does, does, and it's a heck of a lot better than like that system I mentioned in China, where uh, it's uh, you know just authority from the top down, and it's it's only the elites that uh, get to advocate for themselves, and nobody else has the opportunity to uh, advocate for their own self-interest. Uh, but that that what is one of the downsides of our system is that uh, it you know it doesn't always work towards the betterment of all of us. It sometimes. Uh, leads to a lot of us uh, collectively making a bunch of selfish choices which are short-term good for us and maybe long-term uh, bad for all of us. So that's my thoughts on this. Now uh, the gravestone, I mentioned that I would tell you about the gravestone. Now what I know about the headstone is that uh, it's over uh, 200 years old, you know, based on the date that was uh, etched on there. Apparently it was uh, someone who was helping to move, I believe, logs, lumber, firewood or something like that. Uh, oxen were dragging uh, or pulling some kind of a, a cart. Uh, this place where I live, uh, all the woods around me, uh, back during colonial times, back during that like 1800s period uh, when this happened, uh, the majority of this area was deforested. Uh, there were forests here when the native people were living uh, in New England, and when the uh, the colonists came, that one of the first things they did was just clear out the land because that's kind of what they knew. I, you know, look at uh, England where a lot of these people came from. Uh, that was their idea: you, you know, kind of clear the trees back, make pasture land, make farmland. Uh, that was the way that they knew how to make their life. So most of New England got deforested, and one of the people that was helping to, you know, um, have that happen uh, was apparently. Uh, beside the load of firewood or beside the, the logs and the, the cart rolled over and crushed them and they died right there on the spot and they were buried there and that's the story that I know. And uh, the story, you know, it just in relation to, you know, what we're talking about this, about, you know, we're facing all these monumental changes that are coming in our future, um, you know, it, it kind of makes me think about how incredibly um, complete changes can be, you know, when native people were here, it would have been hard for them to envision the idea that this whole area would just be completely deforested, you know, practically completely, down to like almost prairie land. Um, and then during that period, when this whole area was, you know, hardly a tree in sight and it was just all farmland, it would have been hard to think that the forest would ever come back, but they have. And I, th I think oftentimes we get uh, into our kind of no like normalcy bias traps where we forget how much things can change uh, between one time and another. You know, right now we live in a time of plenty and we kind of think that they would always be that way. Just like the natives, they lived in a time of plenty with trees and it must have been difficult for them to imagine a day when all the trees would be gone. Uh, you know, for the, uh, the colonial people who are living here and were, you know, cutting down trees and everything, uh, you know, once, once it got to a point where this landscape was not for us anymore, it must have been very difficult for them to imagine, you know, someday our way of life will collapse and this whole area will grow back into forest again. Hard for, hard for people to imagine that. Hard for us now to imagine what the future might hold. But it's important to always think about it. It's important to keep your eyes open to what those possibilities are and make sure they're real possibilities. Not pie in the sky, imaginary kind of Marvel Universe stuff but real things that are based on real life, real experience, and real evidence in our world. It's exciting to think about things like, you know, supervillains of our time, like uh, omniscient superheroes gone bad that are, you know, uh, you know have, the, have these dark plans for the world. That gives us kind of a sense of importance, uh, you know, in the world that we live in, that we think, you know, we're living in these amazing times. Um, and there's a... Um, there's a, a draw to that, where, you know, you kind of almost want to believe that kind of thing. But I think the evidence is that it's much more mundane and there's much more chaos and confusion that are controlling all this rather than superheroes. That's it. Thanks for watching.
This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every week for new videos. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so through Patreon or PayPal.